day one drama in the extreme race, Cooper Standard versus AMH Construction Instigator, who miscalculate laps and end their race early. In the Superboat class, WHM Motorsports leading the entire race, but passed right here in the final lap by Performance Boat Center, who take the win. Unlimited class, Miss Geico with a risky move on day one to pass CMS3 and finish in first, only to lose the win to a post-race penalty. See how it all unfolds as day two action begins right now on the Superboat World Championships. The Superboat World Championships, presented by Steel. You want to be the best? You got to win in Key West. They've been saying that now for about 36 years. This is a tradition here, a legendary motorsports event. Superboat World Championships here. All the boats, the biggest and baddest of offshore racing gathered. At this one, the climax is the season. You work all year to get to this point right here. We're ready to go. Tommy Sanders here with Mike Iwaski getting ready for the Superboat Extreme category. The second of three races. Three race regiment is what gets you to a world championship. Accumulating points. And Mike, let's take a look at this incredible playing field. A playing field that's always changing. Remember, one bump is not going to be in the same place as the next. As you go out, the waves are going to come from your left side, your port side. Just a slight bit causing you to hop around side to side. You're going to go into turn number one, the wall. This is a tricky turn, whether you go wide, whether you go tight. It all varies on where the waves are. Then into turn number two. Not a whole lot of action here until you exit. Once you exit, you start hitting the holes, the moles again. Start bouncing around. This yellow buoy, very, very tight. This is where we saw WHM Pinch Performance Boat Center down on it. Then you come into the harbor turn, very, very tight turn out across the start-finish line. Seven laps for this extreme class right here, about a 30-mile race in the offing. Yesterday, well, it was a different story for the defending champions. AMH Construction Instigator number one had a little trouble. Cooper Standard continues to lead in Superboat Extreme. Oh, AMH Instigator Construction has slowed on the backside of the race course. I did not see a checkered flag. You know what? We got a bad start, probably five seconds, 10 seconds behind. And, uh, you know, on the coordinate coordinates, uh, lap, it was supposed to be 30 miles, plus or minus. We came through the harbor, GPS ran, it said 32 miles. We went down through the harbor, came back, figured the race was over, and uh, we had one lap to go. Unfortunately, we pulled in a little early. I took myself out, I put Anthony Smith in. He's a little younger, a little lighter. I thought it was the right decision to do at the time. The extra couple of pounds, and I wasn't actually quite feeling up the paw. The boats are running so close that 50, 60 pounds make a world of difference when you're running the whole course. When you're running for 30 miles and carrying an extra 60 pounds, it makes a difference. I'll just be watching the race close on. There's no sense uh, I'll be gritting my teeth and, uh, and saying a little prayer, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's very, um, very difficult to watch a thing goes out there, and these guys are going to turn at 100 miles an hour, wondering if they're going to flip it over on you. It's one of those things, you know. Doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does happen. That was yesterday, this is today. Here for the extreme class, we are getting up to speed, getting very near to the start time of this race. Obviously, a lot of changes coming up for AMH Construction Instigator. We've got a green flag, and we're underway, Mike. We're going racing one more time in Superboat Extreme, and I can tell you right off the bat, it looks like Anthony Smith is doing a tremendous job in AMH Instigator because they're out to about a half a boat length lead over Cooper Standard. Freedom, a much better start now in third place, but remember, we lost number 43, outer limits to a mechanical problem they had yesterday but they realize they may have the same problem again today and decide to pull the plug on the program. Back to the action of the course though, AMH Instigator Construction on the outside. Cooper Standard is gonna be on the inside. This will be an interesting first turn. It doesn't look as rough as it did yesterday out here. That may build a little bit later, but that allows these V-bottoms to carry their bow a little bit further and keep the speed up going into the corner. But look at the intensity inside both of these boats. Both of these teams want to win, Tommy. Absolutely. A reversal of roles from yesterday it was the exact opposite yesterday with Cooper Standard, the early lead, almost immediate, maintaining it throughout the race. But uh, things have changed up, and it looks like they're tightening a little bit now. AMH Construction Instigator just gave enough room for Cooper Standard to get between that boat and the buoy. Remember, have to maintain your lanes through that corner, but 
they came out of that corner great. They came out of that corner to shotgun. I mean, they've pulled a tremendous lead over Cooper Standard now. Cooper Standard dove to the outside, not sure what Brett and Billy saw out there that they wanted, but look how rough it is inside of that boat. Going into turn number two, remember this is where these holes get created by the pipes. Look at Cooper Standard trying to carry that speed, Tommy. See how he went faster trying to close that gap on the outside. Get a good look on whether or not they were able to successfully get much traction there. And that maneuver doesn't look like they've gained a lot of ground. Well, they have just a little bit on AMH construction in Skater 1, so it's tightening up just a touch. Well, the outside line worked well through that corner. They carried a lot more speed. A little rough there. That's a tricky part of the course, too, that we'll talk about a little bit later. But AMH Construction Instigator is going to be on the inside. Cooper Standard on the outside going into the harbor turn. Instigator with the lead. We've got our race underway. Again, going for seven laps. Leave it right there. Take a quick break, and we'll be back to Key West with more of the Superboat Extreme. The Superboat Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by GEICO, WHM Plumbing and Heating Contractors, and by Steel, the number one selling brand of gasoline-powered handheld outdoor power equipment in America. Here at Key West, Superboat World Championships. This is the extreme class, and we're down to lap number six of the seven-lap race here, and still in control. And reversing the roles from yesterday with Cooper Standard is AMH Construction Instigator. Well, Tommy, do you think putting Anthony inside of AMH Construction Instigator was a smart idea? It seems to have paid off now as they go into the final lap. If you look at the outcome, yeah, it seems to have been the right decision. Who knows what all goes into making a, a boat win, but certainly it wasn't anything that hindered them, that's for sure. Not by any means. And they got a great start, right? They were out early, they got clean water, they were where they wanted to be, and now they can kind of control their race. That's exactly opposite of what happened yesterday when Cooper Standard was in control of the race. Look at all that nice, clean water. They don't have to worry about it. cutting them off or going out in front of them or anything like that. They can run their line. They can run their race. Now, Cooper Standard, you can see now going through the white water. They have to worry about where that wake is, where the white water is. They want clear water, not dirty water. So it's now on them to make up that ground. Yeah, and they've got a lot of ground to make up, but it does what you said. It underscores the importance of a good start, even in a short race like this, seven laps. Exactly, even with only now three boats without a limits being out, unfortunately, starts are still key to your success here in Key West, Florida. As Anthony and Johnny Stanch head back out towards turn number one, the wall, take a look at this onboard footage, Tommy, and look at the abuse they go through inside of that boat. There are little bobbleheads in there. Absolutely. The weather's actually better today, but this being a weekend, there's a lot more boat wake, a lot of more traffic out there in the Key West Harbor, so that's what they've got to contend with. Exactly, and every time that boat comes out of the water, Anthony's getting out of the throttles either a lot or a little bit, depending on the boat, and he's got to get back in it. Meanwhile, Johnny's got to keep the wheel turned. Maybe sometimes he's got to straighten up to set the boat right where they want it in the corner. There's a lot that goes into this, especially in a mono hole bolt like this because the boat walks back and forth side to side. But there is no chine walk here. Anthony's got that boat dialed in perfectly. Good, comfortable lead for AMH Construction Instigator, which is US won the champions of the regular season here. Looking to get closer and closer to a world championship and they can tie it into overall points if they can win this one. Right, and exactly like we said yesterday, right? It wasn't over. We knew it wasn't gonna be over. They just had to make some changes. Changes they did and it's paid off for them as they're getting ready to take the checkered flag. It's Superboat Extreme, AMH Construction Instigator. Johnny Stanch, Anthony Smith, and you gotta give some credit to Peter Meyer as well. He's the man in charge there, making the decisions, which again, provided the proper outcome. Well, you heard him say in our segment just prior to this race, it's hard to watch your boat go out there and race and you're not in it. I mean, that's a huge financial investment that Peter Meyer gets to watch go out of the harbor and get abused going around the race course, but nobody better to run it than these two. Running a perfect race, a mistake-free race, that's what every team is looking for, and we gotta consider this team right here, AMH Construction Instigator, to be worthy of our steel power boot. Here we look at the start again. We said it was crucial, we said it was key. Anthony was on the sticks hard. They were watching the green flag on that start-finish boat. Man, what a fantastic start here. Cooper Standard was starting to make up a little bit of ground. We thought it might be a race, but at the end of the day, AMH Construction Instigator just pulled out. They were perfect on prop, perfect on weight. Great run for those guys today. There's Peter Meyer, the whole team. 
rightfully celebrating a great day, sort of turning things around after a, a challenging day number one, race number one in the Superboat Extreme category. These guys now still positioned to take another world championship as we take a look at the official points from that race in 250. His top points going to AMH Construction Instigator, Cooper Standard, second, and Freedom coming in in third place. Be double points now for the third and final race, and we'll have that next time when we see you on Superboat. Tommy, as the Superboat Unlimited class gets ready to go out on the course, we are under a delay. We have a sea turtle in the race course. We have a helicopter inspecting the course. Safety of the environment is key, and this is how we do it. Absolutely, and this is a team in place to take care of incidents just like this. Very concerned about that down here, but the team is well organized and ready. We really want to have races in Florida, but we don't want to hurt the animals. Heard from the governor's office, they said, can you come up with a way that we can have races and protect the animals. So we came up with a criteria. I want to be up an hour ahead of time. I want three methods of communication. I want the doors off the helicopter. I want polarized glasses on my spotters. I tell you, there's a turtle or a manatee in the track, you stop the track. And we've been doing that 30 years. We haven't lost an animal. The racers have kind of gotten used to me because they know I love racing too, but I love those turtles. And like I say, what I try and do is find a way to do both. So it's been great teamwork. We've been able to put on races and not hurt animals. There you have it. Preparation of the race course extends to getting the uh, full-time year-round residents into a safe spot before we crank up the engines. But crank up the engines, it's exactly what we're gonna do when we come back. We'll get you ready for Superboat Unlimited race number two. Superboat World Championships from Key West, Florida. Following the Superboat Unlimited class for race number two in their three race schedule, which leads us to the World Championship. We had some great racing in race number one yesterday. And that boat right there, Geico, the first to cross the finish line, but not without a few questions, especially on the part of the race judges based around what happened on the treacherous, at least sometimes treacherous, turn number three. The harbor turn in Key West is very, very tight. I think Mark and Scotty were setting Randy and Bob up going into this corner, and that led to this move right here. You can hear the crowd even get into it on the turnboat as Mark and Scotty just drove it really, really hard into that corner. Now, there was some discussion at the end of the race about a penalty, and that was figured out this morning. I'll tell you right now, and anybody else that does it is getting a penalty because it's reckless driving, and this is getting out of control out here. One of the uh, premier rules we have here is maintaining your lanes in the turns. That is a 180 degree turn, basically with two buoys at two different locations. If you're going too fast, there's no way you can make a left-hand turn in lane one at that buoy. And most of them try and maintain the speed right up to that buoy or close enough to it. But once you get in, into what we call the apex of the turn, the beginning of where you have to start considering what angle you're gonna take at the buoy, at that point, you have to maintain your lane. If you're in the inner lane, per se, you have to maintain that lane all the way around the 180 degree turn. Geico entered that area too fast to be able to maintain the inner lane. Consequently, when he did turn, the incident occurred. He got the penalty because he was unable to maintain the inner lane and actually slid out. The result was that the Geico boat received second place points instead of first place points, and this one was really a tough call for the judges. It was really hard. I mean, if you're not above it, you can't really see exactly what happened. As we go to our graphic, this will give you a bit better of an idea. Look how we're above it. You can see the green line, Geico. Red line is going to be CMS. This is how a turn should go, right? They maintain their lanes. Geico on the inside, CMS on the outside, and they accelerate exiting the turn. Geico came up and slid out in front of CMS, right? And that's what caused them to get the penalty. Now, was CMS at a little bit of fault too? Quite possibly because they pinched down on him too. So you're right, a little bit of a gray area there, but the officials made the decision. Geico had to abide by the decision, and the result was second place.
So in essence, they had gained enough ground to have a right to choose that line they just couldn't maintain. Exactly, and safety is key. We want everybody to go home to their families and live to see another day, and that's where that decision came from. But now we have a yellow flag in Superboat Unlimited waiting for the green flag. There it is, green flag racing in Superboat Unlimited. Look at the start by CMS, Miss Geico, Maritimo. That's even Lucas Oil way out there with a great start as the rooster tails start to drop. What a start for the Maritimo Australian team. Definitely underway now, and this is the view from the front of the Geico boat. Not uh, not exactly what they wanted to see. No, could have been some revenge there by CMS. Revenge is best served cold as they pitch down onto the Maritimo boat. Maritimo, I don't think they did anything wrong, nor really did CMS. They were probably just protecting that line. Remember, they don't have to maintain the lane in the straightaway. They just have to maintain it in the corner. That definitely is going to hurt Geico a little bit because this salt water really has an adverse effect on these boats as they head into turn number one. That was Maritimo we saw off to the right, just trying to sneak in there, show a nose to the CMS boat. But Tommy, CMS looking perfect once again. Yeah, the setup looks good, very solid looking in there and gaining ground on the field as we speak. Well, that's Maritimo, they lost a little bit of ground through that corner. It's amazing that boat came all the way from Australia here just to race, Maritimo being an Australian yacht builder. What a fantastic story they are on board Geico. Now Geico has dropped back to fourth place. This is Geico team who woke up this morning thinking they had first place points. That was what they'd be working with today and the ruling this morning really dropped them down into second place. But hey, we're just one lap into 10 laps of this race. There's no telling what's gonna happen by the end of it. Look at the excitement in all of these boats. That's CMS in the lead, but that's Geico all the way to the inside. Maritimo and Wake Effects were deck to deck. This is all for second place. Three boats in a battle for second place, trying to chase down your number one three CMS. Very important race for second, third place points, and Wake Effects, who finished sixth place yesterday, certainly improving their lot today. Race number two being a lot better to them. Bob and Randy back to doing what they were doing, running pin to pin. You can see he went pin entry, and now he's going pin exit. Watch him leave it right there, right next to that buoy, trying to protect that valuable inside line. Tommy, that also means they're very comfortable with their acceleration. They know that they can slow down a lot by scrubbing the speed off of it and then accelerate very, very quickly out of the corner. Look at the rest of the field trailing the CMS. Whatever left them vulnerable yesterday seems to have been ironed out in a big way today. Well, you can guarantee that Randy and Bob are not going to let Geico back to the inside. They saw what happened on day one. Day two, they're going to protect that inside lane. Wake Effects having a much better day today, though, Tommy. Yeah, Wake Effects, this team, it's US one. I mean, they were the winners during the regular season, the overall champion coming into this. Great, great outing for this uh, really rookie team, first year team. Whoa, not sure what just happened there, but I think Wake Effects missed that buoy. Maritimo slowing now to the inside of the course. Yeah, they, they're going back around, unbelievable. Yeah, Wake Effects missed that buoy. Now they're gonna have to make a complete loop back around and complete the turn in order not to get an infraction. So they just went past the entrance buoy. Now I see the exit buoy over to the left port side of the boat. There it is. Now they will be able to pick up speed. But Tommy, what a shakeup. They were running so much better today. Absolutely, in third place. And now they're right back where they finished on day number one back here in sixth place. Tommy, let's go to a replay. Try and figure out what happened to Wake Effects going into the corner. The white boat at the top of the screen is Maritimo. See how he lost that buoy in the rooster tail? They've been running so tight to the pin that I think Rusty just might have misjudged where the buoy was and where he needed to be by that rooster tail, causing him to miss the buoy, go back, complete the lap, dropping him back to sixth place. Of course, the rules are such, it does not benefit you to go ahead and take the penalty. You do a lot better no matter how much time it takes to go back around again. Exactly, but this has led us to have what we had on the first day. CMS in the lead, Geico in second, CRC Sunlight Supply. This is shaping up to be a battle for second place. Look at Team CRC Sunlight Supply. Whoa, whoa, almost another repeat of AMH Construction Instigator and Cooper Stander from the Superboat Extreme Class last year maybe trying to trade a little bit of paint, but I think what Gary Ballou wanted to do was push him out just a little bit, try and scrub that speed, but by this shot right here, it didn't work. Geico had that acceleration, was able to make up for that little bit of lost ground. Yeah, everyone able to maintain their lanes, but for a moment there, just barely. Team CRC Sunlight Supply, wow, passing Geico again on the inside. I think Geico may have some sort of a problem. Now, Tommy, these engines have what's called guardian mode, okay? If they sense something is wrong, water pressure, oil temperature, oil pressure, anything like that, they'll actually slow the motor down so it doesn't hurt itself. That may be what's happening to Geico. They have slowed quite a bit on the outside. Now, guardian mode will clear itself, 
once they slow down to a certain RPMs and the engine sees that nothing is wrong. But so far, Team CRC, Sunlight Supply is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, absolutely. The Geico guys hoping to clear that off very quickly. Meanwhile, Team CRC in second place. The Superbug Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by Wake FX, AMH Construction, Geico, and by Steel, built in America, believing in America. Superboat International World Championships from Key West, Florida. Got a great race going on in the unlimited class now. The CMS 3 boat has gone away from the rest of the field, run off and, and left everyone with the great duel right here between CRC, Sunlight Supply, and Miss Geico. Well, this is great to see with CRC, Sunlight Supply, simply because they don't have a lot of time in the boat. They're both very experienced racers, but they just don't have a lot of time. Not nearly as much as Mark and Scotty do. See, I hear Geico chop that throttle like that. Yeah. I'm what not does that tell you? I don't know what they're doing. Uh, it's obviously not, I don't think it's a guardian mode issue. You know, and talking to these teams yesterday, when they go into the corner, they have to pay attention to two gauges, their tack, and they have to pay attention to their boost gauge because where these motors make their power is where you want to be when you go into that corner so you can have the acceleration out of it. If you drop below where they want them to be, then you don't get that acceleration. Doesn't explain why Scotty would be chopping that throttle because you could almost hear the engine shut off and start back up. Tommy Geico's got something figured out for CRC Sunlight Supply. They've gone back to the inside and almost reversed what they did on the last lap. They passed CRC Sunlight Supply like they were standing still. So Miss Geico now in control of second place. You know, we're concentrating on second place is very, very important. Remember on the final day's race, all points values will be doubled. So get in position to shoot for a world championship is very, very important as Geico loses second place again. Well, I don't know about control, Tommy, because I don't think Mark and Scotty have a whole lot of control over second place. CRC Sunlight Supply just passed them on the outside. Again, this has been a back and forth battle all race long. This is a battle, however, for fourth place. Team Wake Effects, boat number 03, missed that buoy in turn number two. So they had to loop back around and drop back to sixth place. Now they're in fifth, trying to get into fourth. Remember, they've got to chip away as much as they can in order to be able to make up points in this World Championship race. As we go on board with boat number 52, Edby, what a great shot. First off, how small those windshields are, but look at the speed in the middle of your screen. 136, 137 miles an hour as they head out to the wall, turn number one. But look at 03 wake effects on the inside. What a burst of speed into the corner. They have now taken over fourth place. Tommy, they are chipping away. Absolutely. Pick off one more boat and they're back in the position they were in before they missed that buoy marker. Exactly. That's going to be really, really good for points as they pull away from boat number 52, Envy. But back to the CRC Sunlight Supply Geico battle. This has been back and forth and back and forth. CRC Sunlight Supply on the inside. Geico on the outside. Let's see what Geico can do on this straightaway. Last time by, we heard that pop. Remember, we talked about they may have some sort of an issue. Let's see if that's a factor again. Catching a whole bunch of air coming around that, uh, that very notable turn number two right there. Maybe losing a little bit of ground to Team CRC Sunlight Supply. Well, I didn't hear the pop, right? So I think they were able to maintain the speed going into this turn number three. Oh, they ducked back inside of CRC Sunlight Supply. All right, this is a little bit of a replay from race number one here. And that allowed them to get back into second place once again. So I'm not sure if CRC Sunlight Supply was trying to push them out wide, trying to scrub off the speed for the corner, but it did not work out for them. I think Mark and Scotty said, you know what? We're not going to go all the way out there. We'll dive back to the inside. And look, it worked. They're now definitive in second place. And CRC made to pay the price for that move right there. And this Geico opening up ever more room ahead of CRC Sunlight Supply. You wonder if maybe they're, they're faltering a bit. Well, they seem to be slowing. Wow, this has been a roll reversal almost in this race in Superboot Unlimited. Geico is having problems. Now CRC Sunlight Supply having problems as we go on board. Boat number 03 Wake Effects. Now, if CRC Sunlight Supply goes out, that will put 03 Wake Effects as they go by CRC Sunlight Supply. 03 Wake Effects, Tommy, now in third place. Pardon us for, for watching so closely those races for second and third, fourth and fifth, because 
Well, in all honesty, this team CMS3 has made first place very, very boring. They are totally in control and keep distancing themselves farther and farther away from the field. A magnificent effort here in race number two for this team. Great showing as they're going to come around and start their final lap. What a tough day for Maritimo, though. The boat based out of Australia, the only time they come to America to race is for Key West in the World Championships. And if you spend all this money and make this investment, that's not the day you want to have. A gigantic commitment for this group out of Australia. It's disappointing to them to, to falter in race number two, where they appear to have right now. Miss Geico hanging in there in second place. But they're going to look in their rearview camera, and they're going to see O3 Wake Effects is coming for them. I think O3 Wake Effects definitely has more speed. In fact, they're going to pass them. You know, Tommy, Geico had that same problem a few laps ago in the same part of the track. I wonder if it's a Guardian mode issue. I wonder if it could be a sensor gone bad. Remember, if a sensor even gets wet and starts shorting out, it can upset that computer and put it into Guardian mode. But as much as they slowed, I think they have some sort of mechanical issue now. Now, that's put O3 wake effects into second place. Are they going to be able to catch CMS and also moves Envy up to third place? What a great showing for this team. They have a lot of experience in this boat, but they're trying to figure out their engine package, and it's doing a great job here today. Look, 143 miles an hour in Key West, Florida. Yeah, and again, we saw him just pass Miss Geico there, and there's the end of that story for Miss Geico today. What a disappointment at the very end of this race. Well, look at Mark Granite, and look at that disappointment. Tommy, they were doing what they needed to do, right? Unlike last year, they were up front. They were finishing races. Things were going their way. You have to wonder if that delay in the race may have caused some sort of an issue to take them out. CMS is now in first place, O3 Wake Effects in second place, and boat number 52 Envy now in third. Really got to have hats off to this team right here, the CMS3 team, Bob Bull, Randy Sism. Just an absolutely flawless job leading from basically from start to finish. Tommy, you think these guys had a statement to make after what happened to them in the first day of racing? You think they wanted to go out there and prove something and say, look, Geico, you're not getting away with that a second time in a row. Yeah, they could uh, brush all the troubles right off their shoulder and just go back to doing exactly what they're the best at. And boy, they have seen that way today. They are coming across the finish line to take the checkered flag. Here is boat number 03, Wake Effects Tommy. Second place for them now. Complete turn of events for them as they were down to sixth place ever having missed the marker buoy early on in this race. What a comeback for this team. And congratulations to Envy, Chris Cox, Herb Stotler, third place in Superboat Unlimited. Hard to believe. O3 Wake Effects came back for second place after missing a buoy, but offshore powerboat racing is a sport of attrition, Tommy. Definitely endurance, an asset out here. CMS had the biggest measure of that today. A great, great outcome for them, 250 points. Top points on the second day of racing, followed by Wake Effects, Envy, Miss Geico. Of course, these are cumulative points. You get all your totals for three days of racing. After two days, CMS with the lead. But you look at the rest of those teams with double points on the final day, even down to fifth place, Envy. All those five teams definitely very much in this thing. Again, the huge disappointment for Miss Geico returning to the harbor, not under her own power. And big time kudos to the entire CMS3 team, including Bob Bull and Randy Sism. Well, we did a little different setup for today than we had the other day. And the other day I kind of got caught sleeping. I didn't know they were coming up behind us and I slowed down about four seconds a lap. So this time I said, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out a little bit and then uh, we'll see where we are. The boat ran great. My crew did an awesome job. It don't get any better. Good stuff in the unlimited class, the super boat class, the premier class. These world championships is coming up next on our show from Key West. Don't go away. West Florida 36th Annual Super Boat World Championship presented by Steel. Three racing days, three races will get you a world championship if you can gain enough points in each race. This is the Super Boat class, the marquee class. And these guys, Micah, crawling into the boat, you get a good idea of what the quarters are like in there. Well, exactly. And you see all the safety stuff. You see the oxygen. You can see Jay Muller's crew getting ready to tape his connection together for his intercom system. They can talk back and forth with each other, have conversation. Some people have full-time air, like in a F-16 fighter jet, in case the boat flips over. They always have air going to them. They don't have to worry about picking up a regulator. Other teams just have to get a scuba regulator, put it in their mouth, purge it until they can get out. 
WHM Motorsports, the yellow boat right there, trying to repeat as the world champions. Of course, things didn't go quite their way on day number one. Not a bad effort at all. But uh, at the end, the final lap, that's when the drama happened. The WHM had to settle for second place. But second place is not bad in this situation out here in Key West. You got three races, remember, to accumulate points. What a battle this was between Performance Boat Center, Jimmy Johns, and WHM. Not really a battle back and forth. I mean, it took the last lap, the steel power move of the race was right here when Performance Pro Center Jimmy Johns took the inside line away from WHM. That's exactly what they needed to do in order to take the win. Certainly a disappointment for Billy Moff and Jay Muller, but certainly not the end of the world. Anything can happen. Look what happened to WHM last year. We placed a second, a first, and a second. Won the Worlds. It's called, you gotta, you gotta have a little strategy. You gotta have a little bit of intelligence. No, it's gonna be a good day. Our, our race is the next race. So, you know, I'm kind of very excited. Uh, go out and do as good as we could possibly do. Gonna get that chance very shortly here. We're getting closer and closer to the start of this race. This is the time when the boats gather to mill around in anticipation of what's happening. Report to the milling area when there's a red flag, yellow flag, get lined up. Green flag is what starts the race. We got the smoke too, Mike. The orange smoke signifies that you are to start lining up for the start of your race. See how they circle counterclockwise? You do not want to be facing the opposite direction of the start of this race, or you're going to get left behind. Race control is telling them, hey, get up to the start finish line, start to get into position. They don't have lanes or anything like that. They can go wherever they need to, but they need to be facing the right direction. And that's what the orange smoke signifies. Get in that direction, and you can see that's what these teams are doing. They're starting to turn up, look at Billy and Jay. They're figuring out where they want to be. As the pace boat comes up on plane, there is our yellow flag. They're going to wait for the boats to line up. This is a great perspective of a start. And a fantastic start in the super boat class. Look at this. Green flag, ladies and gentlemen. We're going racing Key West style. Really bad start for Steele, though, Tommy. I wonder if Steele couldn't see the green flag. Look how much they lagged back on that start. It's an eight-boat start, so you're susceptible to having a little bit of chaos at the start right there. Out of position maybe a bit, back too far, as you say. It may have been a bad situation for the steel boat. But two great starts for HP Mafia and Cleveland Construction, two boats that were not in contention on day one. WHM Motorsports and T Custom Marine, your top one and two. Remember, Tommy, T Custom Marine had a fabulous race on the first day last year. They dominated. That's a 36-foot boat compared to a 40-foot boat. Now, if it was rougher, WHM would want that, right, because of the overall length. But since it's flat, kind of calm, this 36-foot skater of T Custom Marine should be able to keep up with WHM in these flatter conditions. It'll be interesting to see as these boats get lighter, come into their setup or come off of their setup, what Teague Custom Marine is going to be able to do. You can guarantee that Bob Teague has it figured out. He's going to be able to give WHM a run for their money. And WHM taking definitely the inside point-to-point -point line in his first turn. Look at Steele now, Tommy. Steele has moved up to third place after what seemed to be a dismal start for this team. On board with our leaders, Billy Moff, Jay Muller. It's cool in there, Tommy. See how their seats are moving up and down? Those are actually suspension seats mounted on springs in order to be able to take some of that shock of when the boat lands and goes up and down. Got to cut down on the number of fillings you lose out of your teeth during the course of a typical race. I would start to think so. There is WHMT Custom Marine to the inside. That is steel in the middle. The only boat I don't see right now, Tommy, is Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns, our day one winners. Where are they? Remember, this is critical to get up there and mess with these guys. These boats are so evenly matched that if they're really far behind, they might not be able to make up that ground. They may have to count on some sort of mechanical error. WHM Motorsports getting a little bit farther away from T Custom Marine. Remember, WHM Motorsports not too far behind on points. They got second place points on race day one. Not to take anything away from WHM Motorsports. They are your leaders in Super Bowl. But Tommy, how about that steel team? Jake Noble, first time ever racing in Key West. First time facing with Grant Ruggerman down here, and he's doing a fantastic job to finish on the first day. Yeah, finished fourth place. Very respectable finish, especially for a first timer here. It's a very difficult race course to learn, but Grant is a great throttle man, and he's doing a great job at teaching Jake how to run that boat and what to look for. And now they're getting in a heated battle with US1 Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns. Look how calm both of these teams remain. There's no yelling. There's not a lot of activity. Both teams very calm. They know what needs to be done inside of these boats in order to be able to win. But Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns has a lot of ground to make up, currently in fourth place. Remember, they were our winners on day 
one. They cannot let WHM get too far out ahead of them. They've got to keep them in check. Yeah, Performance Boat Center's putting on a great show yesterday. Just a last second nipping of WHM Motorsports in the final lap in order to take that victory home. Now, Tommy, what do you think Billy Moff and Jay Muller are thinking in WHM, right? I mean, Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns literally caught them and passed them. Do you think that WHM is going to be more protective of their line now? One thing's for sure, they definitely do not want a replay of what happened to them in the final lap yesterday. We're just in lap number two of 10 laps for the Superboat Class and the Superboat World Championships in Key West. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. down with our boats. This is what it's all about right here. I mean, coming out and racing, that's only an hour of the whole weekend of the week. Coming out here, talking to the fans, meeting the people, the experiences you get, the people you meet, you couldn't ask for anything more. The people here are ecstatic than they are every year, and you can't make this up. There's 50,000 people here. It's, it's crazy. I've taken pictures with about 50 people that come here every year and say, we got to get my yearly picture, we got to get a yearly picture. So people plan their vacations around this event. It's just, it's just an unbelievable event. How about that turnout for the block party? You don't think this is a big event down here? One of the two biggest tourist events that they have in Key West. Just a big, big deal to Superboat World Championships. Now going on for 36 years and now going on in first place for several laps, WHM Motorsports. And remember, Tommy, what they say, to be the best, you have to win in Key West. And I think that's what Billy and Jay are trying to do, right? I think they're trying to put their name in the history books one more time, claiming this world championship. They're trying to go out and prove a point, right? They got beat yesterday. Flat out just got beat. Performance Boat Center Jimmy Johns caught him, passed him, and beat him. Today, I think they're trying to go out and put an exclamation point and say, you know what? This is our championship to lose. So much experience in that boat. Billy Moff dating back for way back into those 36 years. Back in the early days, he calls the Wild West days of this event. As we go on board with the three different teams, look in the middle. T Custom Marine. Paul Whittier is taking his hands off of the steering wheel. He's just trying to make sure those drives are straight and they're carrying as much speed in that T Custom Marine 36 foot skater. Tommy, what an improved day for the Steel Team, also currently running in third place, one position better than how they were doing yesterday. While it's only one position, it's more points towards a world championship. That's the reason we're here, is to win this world championship. And you know, Jake Noble is trying to do his father well. He's trying to establish himself as an offshore power racer, and he's also trying to do the Steel name very well, too. The Steel Team, all of these other teams, all in pursuit of WHM Motorsports on this day. Race day number two, they have got things tightened up, trimmed out, and they are looking good at this point. So much experience, again, in this boat. And as far as Billy Moff here, obviously a guy with racing in his blood. How about this? This guy could even put together his own sled dog team because it would be an understatement to say he is into Huskies in a big way. So what's that guy? What could dad's got from the girl? Huskies, you know, I've had Huskies my whole life. Happy birthday, Sterling, it's your birthday. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm 59. I've had Huskies since I was a kid. They're very gentle. They're great dogs. I live on Long Island in the winter months. Those dogs will go outside. They'll stay outside in that snow all day long. Wow. Get in the truck. But it's their house. It ain't my house. It's their house. So, you know, it's, it's their suburban. It's their house. Listen, they get to fly in a private jet. They get to go up north snowmobiling. They, listen, they, they got it made like you have no idea. I can do whatever I got to do in my life, but without them dogs, I can't do anything. You know, they are my life. Billy Boff and the Huskies, how about that story right there? 
leading the Huskies. A little bit of a sad note, a sad footnote, lost one of the Husky team there. Crystal departed this earth not too long ago, so our thoughts are with everyone and the dogs. But right now, the main focus is on winning this race, this second race out of three, and to run down that world championship in the Superboat class. Tommy, they have stretched out a huge lead, and look how relaxed they are. They're not as tense as they were in that first race. They're racing now in front of them. They're not trying to race behind them or alongside of them, but Performance Boat Center, Jimmy John, still sitting back there in fourth place. Remember, that's not where they want to be in a world championship points battle, because that's going to allow Teague and Steele to get in there and kind of mix up the points a little bit. But this is what Billy and Jay needed to do. They needed to go out, they needed to get the win, and establish them as the leader coming out of two days of racing. Not only looking strong, but as they pass by all the spectators here, sounding very strong. You just get that feeling, you just get that vibe, that this bunch has got it the way they want it, and they're not going to let up for one second. Tommy, do you feel the rumble of those two 750 <laughs> horsepower engines Everyone. <laughs> in your chest as they go by? This is just so exciting to watch. And I'm really impressed by Teague today. Boat number 77, T Custom Marine, has really gotten it together on the second day racing. This is the first time this boat has raced all year long, all the way from California. Didn't have a good day on the first day, but the second day, they've come out with something to prove. Yeah, they, they figured that travel schedule just got too brutal for them. Took a year off from that this year and just trying to get things uh, put together, ready to go again. Terrible day yesterday, sixth place, but boy, they have turned it around in a big way. Steele has also turned it around, currently running in third place. One position better than the day before. Good day for these guys, solid, getting themselves up in the points of battle just a little bit. A cool note about the steel boat, Tommy, if you look behind the orange bar, that's actually a bilge pump, and that bilge pump is designed if the boat flips upside down to pump water out of the cockpit if there was water to intrude inside of it. Neat little safety fact there about what Grant can do to rig a boat. Great shot right there, shows the uh, lead that the steel, number three position boat right now, has over Performance Boat Center. Performance Boat Center, they don't want to drop much further back than that. I mean, they don't want to squander those first place points that they picked up on day number one. That was a fantastic effort, the big effort today, obviously coming from Team WHM, but we got three laps and change left to go. We'll be back to wrap this one up when we return. The Super Bowl Key West World Championship presented by Steel is brought to you by Geico, Wake FX, and by Steel and the 36 volt Steel Lightning Battery System. What can you do on a single charge? World Championships mean you have to perform over three races. This is the second race in the Super Bowl class of the Super Bowl World Championship. And that has been the story of this race right here. Finishing second yesterday, nipped right at the end, but Team WHM Motorsports has got it together today. A near flawless performance. They went out and they said, you know what? We've got to win this race. We've got to get ourselves back on top. And that's what they've done. Hats off to T Custom Marine, though. They've also done a fantastic job running in second place and Steele still in third as our final lap. Unless something breaks, this is how these boats are going to finish. And you know, Performance Boat Center is now in fourth. That they finish in fourth, Tommy, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in the points battle. Absolutely, yeah, that should keep them in the race for sure since they knocked out first place points in day one of racing. So barring anything completely unforeseen, the most improbable scenario in the world, that's going to be your winners right there, WHM Motorsports. Now, Tommy, as we look forward to the third and final day of racing, I've seen that the weather is not supposed to change, right? Like last year at Key West, remember that last day? It was super duper rough out there. But seeing the weather reports, I think the weather is going to be almost the same as what it is today. So these teams are going to be really happy with their setup. I do think Bob Teague is going to be looking for a little bit more out of that 36-foot skater. Obviously, Performance Boat Center, Jimmy Johns, they need to find something in order to be able to get back and be in contention for the win. Well, there they are coming close to the finish line of the checkered flag out for this team. WHM Motorsports, the crowd, giving them a big hand, big favorites down here and have been for years and years. They take the checkered flag, second place. There they are, Paul Whittier and Bob T. Hanging in there for a strong second place and moving up one spot from race number one, the Steel Team. Hats off to Jake Noble inside of it. He's holding his own, Tommy, on these crazy, crazy starts in the Super Bowl class. You know, a fun fact about WHM, he puts the bagpipes up on the deck of his boat for the block party here at Key West. It's a great thing that he does. All right. 
Maybe we'll get a little bagpipe music coming out of this when they get it back into the harbor there, get it hoisted out of the water. Everything's taken care of. All the preparation begins for the final day of racing. That's the money day. That's the day when the championship is decided. There's the points totals from today, the second race only, WHM on top. Of T, Custom Marine picking up second place points. You see Performance Boat Center, they had the top points on day number one, so they're not going to fall out of this race. There, there they are at second place. And cumulative points, that's what really matters today. The top four teams, including T, Custom Marine, maybe even including NZ1, the Pro Floors team, they could all be a part of this as the points double on the final day. That was a lot of fun, tell you what. That was a really fun race, I'll tell you what. Billy nailed the turns perfect, and the boat ran unbelievable. I got a thousand things rolling through my head. I know I had to keep my mind, keep myself focused. Prop call was very good that we made. Can't say what it is, but it made a good prop call. Did everything right. When you do it right, you get rewarded. Amen, brother, number one. Who can argue with that? Certainly was the reward of first place today for Team WHM. Congratulations to them. To the other first place teams today, our congratulations as well. How about Marker 17 Marine, Superboat V-Class winner on day number two. Stock one, FJ Propeller, Jamie Harrison and Gary Ballou took the top spot. Production three, Second Amendment, Carl Stigger and Neil Wobble, first place finishers in that class. And production four, hey, love this name, always love this name, Crazy Chicken, number 33, the early Anthony Silveria. They got it done on this day of racing. So that puts day number two to bed there. We've got our results in our pocket and we're ready to travel on to the third and final day. That's the big day. It's for all the money, you leave nothing on the table and you've got a world championship at stake. It's gonna be a lot of fun when we see you next time.